So in this class, we're going to start setting up control curves for the spine controls, the upper body control, and the hip controls. So let's turn on our x-ray joints so we can see the joints. When we created the skeleton, we used Maya's skeleton creator, and then we made some modifications. We added forearm joint and a jaw joint and some other joints, but I realized that we did forget to add a joint in between the lower spine and the root joint. Normally on a 3D rig, there's a joint in between these two, and that joint is there to separate the upper body from the lower body, and it allows us to swivel the hips. But we've already gone and painted all the weights, so I don't want to unbind the skin because we're going to lose all of our weight painting that we did. Normally, it's best to have the skeleton set up perfectly before you bind the skeleton to the model. But sometimes things like this happen, and it's okay because we can still add a new joint and have that new joint bound to the skin around it. All right, so to add a new joint, make sure you're on the rigging menu set, and we'll go to skeleton and click on the insert joints tool. So now we have that insert joints tool activated and you can see it in our toolbar here. So just go anywhere in between the root joint and the lower spine joint. I'm just gonna click and you can see that it adds a new joint. So hit W on your keyboard for the move tool and we'll just move that up a little bit. Normally this joint is called the root joint, but we're gonna call it the core joint because we've already named this joint root joint. I'm just gonna move it out a little bit so you can see that it's actually parented to the root joint. So we wanna parent these together. So we'll click on the spine first Whichever joint you click on first, or whichever object you click on first, is going to be the child. We want the spine joint to be the child and this new joint to be the parent. So we'll click on the spine first, so it's the child. Click on the new joint, we'll hit P on our keyboard. And before we do that, I just want to show you what it does in the graph editor. So we can see our new joints at the bottom of the hierarchy. And I have my lower spine joint selected. So you can see those two are highlighted in yellow. So when I hit P on the keyboard, it actually puts the lower spine joint underneath this new joint, just named joint one for now. We're going to rename it in a minute. If we select the new joint, I'm just going to detach it from the hierarchy for a minute. So hover over the new joint. I'm going to middle mouse button click and drag out into the space here and that'll, that'll just take it right off the hierarchy. And now you can see that whole chunk is just placed over here on the end. And you can see here that it's completely detached. So now I'm going to select the root joint first and then this new joint and we'll hit P on the keyboard. And now you can see that when we select the new joint, it selects the entire skeleton. When we select the root joint, it just gets the bottom part of the, of the body. And when we select the lower spine joint, it just gets the top. So you can see that we have two different sections here. This joint in the middle selects the whole character now. And that's what we want because now when we select the root bind joint, now we can rotate the hips separately. This new joint, usually called the root joint, will take the entire upper body with it. All right, so I don't like the way that's placed, so I'm going to let the space bar from my marking menu, and let's go to the right view for a minute. And we can hold D down on our keyboard with that new joint selected, and let's place it. It's not bound to the skin yet at all, so I'm just going to move it back into place. Uh, so we have to bind this joint to the new skin. So we can't use the bind skin function anymore because the skin already has a skin cluster input. Okay, so let's name this new joint before we go any further. Right now it's just called joint one. I'm going to name it core joint. All right, so let's get this new joint bound to the skin. So let's select the, the model first and then shift select the new joint and let's go to skin and we're going to go down to edit influences. We're going to go to add influence. Just going to hit the option box for a minute and just go to edit and reset settings just to make sure we're on the default settings and let's just hit apply. You can just close that up. Right now I'm just going to test it. I'm going to select my root joint, rotate the hips. We'll have to repaint weights on that because we haven't painted weights on that new joint yet. But you can see at least we get the hips rotating independently of the body. And this new core joint should take the entire body with it, the entire upper body. Now let's create our control curves. All right, so we're gonna create one for the upper body control, one for the hips, and then three for the spine, one for each spine joint. All right, so we can just go to our curve surfaces shelf here. I'm just gonna click on NURB circle here. You can scale that up, move it into place. Now I'm just gonna turn off my polygons for a minute so I can snap these into place. So we'll just go to show and polygons, turn them off. We can hold down V on our keyboard. So this is going to be for the upper body, not the hips. So let's snap it into place on that new joint there. Turn our polygons back on. And just go ahead and scale this however you like. You can even reshape it. So if we press F8, we can go into component mode, select any of the CVs, and we can move them around and change the shape of our control curve however we like. For the upper body control, I'm just gonna leave it as a circle. Usually I like to shape the hips control just so I know it's different. So we'll just press F8 to get back to object mode. 
All right, so just like we did with all the other control curves, you wanna go to edit and delete by type. You wanna choose history and we'll go to modify and we wanna freeze the transformations to get all of our values back to zero in the channel box here. We're just gonna select freeze transformations. I'm gonna repeat the same process and create a control curve for the hips and one for each spine joint. I'm just gonna hide my polygons again. Every time I create a new control curve and I'm placing it, I just hide the polygon so that I can hold down V and snap it to the joint. Otherwise, if the polygons are there, you end up snapping it to the polygon points by accident. All right, so now that I have it snapped to the joint, I'm just gonna show my polygons again. Now we can scale that up just so we don't have two circles there and it's just sort of confusing. I'm just gonna change the shape of this one a little bit so I know it's for the hips. So we can hit F8 on the keyboard to get into component mode. Now, if you don't like how many CVs there are here, if you want more CVs to give it more of a specific shape, if you go back into object mode, and press F8, under inputs here in the channel box, if you click on that, you'll see there's a bunch of attributes here. And right at the bottom where it says sections, where it says it has eight sections, so we can increase that. I'm just gonna increase that from eight to 30. And now when you select the curve and you press F8 to go into component mode, you see you have way more points here, more CVs. You can give it more of a specific shape. I'm just gonna set it to 12, let's say. All right, so I'm gonna shape my hip control a little bit. So just to make it easier to work on it, I'm just gonna go to show and we'll click off polygons, we'll click off joints, click off IK handles. It's a little easier to work on it this way. All right, I'm gonna go with something like that. All right, so I'll press F8 to get back into object mode, and I'm gonna make sure that I delete the history, and we're gonna to go to modify, and we're gonna freeze the transformations, and now let's create the controls for the spine. I'll just go with the circle for those. So I'm gonna create a near circle. Let's bring that up, and again, I'm gonna turn my polygons off. I'm gonna hold down V and snap it right to that joint. I'm just gonna do all three of them, and then we'll scale them up. And let's show our polygons again so we can scale them up a little bit. So you can see here I scaled it to 1.728. Let's just scale it to 1.8. Then we can do all three like that. Let's just go 1.8. We can drag over all these scale values and just type in 1.8. We'll do the next one just so they're all the exact same size. They don't really have to be, but I like to make sure that everything's consistent. All right, so we have all of our spline controls in. Now we wanna go through, let's clear all the history and freeze transformations on all these. All right, so the next step is let's name these. So the top one we'll name upper spine control, and let's name the middle one mid spine control, and the bottom one we'll name lower spine control. All right, so we have our three spine controls named. Now let's name our upper body control and the pelvis control. All right, so the next step is to constrain these to the joints, and then we're gonna parent everything together so, so it moves properly. And we're going to parent constraint the upper body control curve to the new core joint. So select the control curve first and then the new core joint. And we'll go to constrain and we'll just choose parent. It's a good idea to go to the option box and just make sure that maintain offset is checked and translates and rotates are checked all. And hit add or apply. So once we do that, we can now move the upper body with our control curve. Next, we're gonna orient constrain the hip control curve to the bind root joint, and the hip should rotate. We'll select our hip control curve, and we'll select the bind joint, the root bind joint, and we'll go to constrain and we'll hit orient. Again, make sure, go to the option box, make sure that maintain offset is on, and hit add. Now, if we use the control curve, it should rotate the hips properly. Just give it a quick test, and then hit control Z, or set these back to zero. Now we wanna parent the upper body control curve to the hip. Because currently, if I move the upper body around, you can see the hip control does not come with it. Since we want the pelvis to be the child, we wanna select the pelvis first, and then we'll select the upper body control. And we can hit P on the keyboard, and watch what it does in the hypergraph. You can see our pelvis control here, our pelvis control node, and our upper body control node are right next to each other. But when I hit P on the keyboard, it puts the pelvis underneath the upper body. So now the pelvis is the child. So when we select the, the upper body, the pelvis comes along for the ride. And we can still 
rotate the pelvis. If you find it confusing as to which one to select first and then press P on the keyboard to parent them, you can do it right in the hypergraph here as well. So we're going to just work with the spine first. So when I select the lower spine, I want the other controls to be selected. Uh, instead of pressing P, we can do it another way in the hypergraph here. We can middle mouse button drag the mid spine onto the lower spine and see how it makes it the child of the lower spine. And then we can middle mouse button drag the upper spine underneath the mid spine. And now they're in a hierarchy together. So when I select the upper spine, you can do it here in the hypergraph. You can see it selects everything. So now when I move the lower spine control, they all go with it. You really want them to be linked together this way. It's really helpful for animators when they start to pose the character. So for example, if I select the lower spine, the mid spine, and the upper spine, and we go to rotate, you can see how they all rotate together nicely. And it just helps the animators pose the characters more quickly. So now we need to constrain our spine controls to the spine joints. So we'll select the lower spine control curve and we'll shift select the lower spine joint. And we'll go to constrain and parent constraint. I always like to test it really quickly just to make sure it's working. And control Z. And then we'll select the mid spine control and the mid spine. Parent constraint. All right, and then we'll select the upper spine control and the upper spine joint and we'll parent constrain that as well. Now when we select the upper body control, I want it to select the spine controls as well. So let's just drag the whole lower spine onto the upper body. So now when we select the upper body control, it's going to bring all the spine controls with it. Now we're going to do the same thing with the arms. I'm just going to select my arm control here and let's find it in the hypergraph. We can hit F on the keyboard to focus in on it. I can select two controls and hit P to parent them, but if that feels confusing to you, you can continue to work in the hypergraph. If you like to middle mouse button drag nodes onto one another, it gets difficult to do in the hypergraph because it's more of a horizontal layout. That's why people use the outliner because it's a, it's a vertical layout, but I find it's confusing for people who are just starting out. So what you can do though is go to, to make the graph editor a little more easy to use, you can go to options under layout. Right now we're on automatic and it basically just snaps everything to a horizontal layout. But if you choose freeform, now we can actually move things around. I'm just going to move this hierarchy over here to where the shoulders are. We want the FK shoulder controls to be parented underneath the upper spine controls. So I'm just going to middle mouse button drag the left shoulder control on top of the upper spine control. And then we'll middle mouse button drag the right shoulder on top of the upper spine control as well. And you can see how we can just move them into place here when we're in freeform layout. Okay, so you can leave your layout on freeform or you can put it back to automatic. All right, so the last two controls we're going to attach to our character for his main body are controls for the neck and the head. So again, we're just going to use circles. So we'll go to our curved surfaces shelf and we'll just create another circle. And I'm going to use control D on my keyboard to duplicate that one. We'll move it up, snap it to the neck joint. And I'm going to do it one more time for the head control. And V again, we'll snap it to the head joint. And let's turn our polygons back on for a minute. All right, so let's just adjust these neck controls a little bit. All right, now let's do the head control. The head control, usually I like to form that uh, curve a little bit. So I'm just going to scale it up and we'll go into component mode. Really just something that's aesthetically pleasing and it doesn't even have to be aesthetically pleasing, but something that is easy to click and just sort of looks nice on the character. All right, so the next thing we want to do is clear the history and freeze transformations on all these new controls. Now we'll name them. So we'll call this one lower neck control and we'll call this one upper neck control and we'll call this one head control. All right, so the next thing we need to do is constrain them to the joints. We'll select our lower neck control first and shift select the joint. And we're just gonna use parent constraints and we'll click add. Select our upper neck control, shift select the joint, constrain and we'll just go parent. Select the head control and the head joint and we will pair and constrain that. All right, so the next thing we need to do, just like we did with the upper body control and the spine and arm controls, we need to parent the controls together and then incorporate them into the hierarchy that we have for the upper body here. And we can see our controls here in the hypergraph. So we can do it one of two ways. We can, we can select the upper neck control and the lower neck control and hit P on the keyboard. 
You can see it puts the upper neck underneath the lower neck. So when we move the lower neck, the upper neck comes with it. Then we want the head to come along for the ride as well. So we'll, we can either select the head and shift select the lower neck and hit P, or we can do it this way in the hypergraph. We can middle mouse button drag the head right onto the upper neck. As long as it looks like this, it'll work. Now when we move the lower neck, everything comes along for the ride. Now we need to put all that onto the hierarchy that we have for the upper body. So we can just go to the lower neck and middle mouse button drag and release it over top of the upper spine control. And now you see it's connected to the upper spine. So if we test that now, you can see it just everything comes along for the ride. And it's good to just test things, move it around a little bit. Rotate and translate everything, make sure it's working properly. And it is, so we can just set all these back to zero. All right, so that's it for the main body controls. Next, we're gonna begin rigging the face, starting with the eyes and brows.